so uh, soap is uh, one of the protocols which is being followed by the web services and uh, soap stands for a simple object access protocol okay and that basically is the uh, is the definition uh, of the way in which the xml is uh, structured and this protocol has been very much similar i mean not same because it's not same as http but the way in which it has been designed and it looks it's very much similar to what we have uh, in the case of http also so the thing is that entire uh, xml the soap xml if you see it is divided into two sections okay so one of the sections is like say obviously since the communication is between an xml so you need a start and an end tag right so you have the soap uh, request right and it ends in the soap request right now inside this you have various sections one section is the uh, is about the request headers now and the other section is the actual body right so the thing is if you see the http request if you if you have seen or worked on it in the sense that if you download some of the common mozilla plugins to see how the data moves and you'll see that apart from like uh, I mean, uh, like normal data which has to be communicated, uh, passed on, uh, like say the uh, the form elements etc. There are a number of other elements also which gets passed from the uh, request side, which are called as request headers. So the need was uh, thought of here as well in the case of SOAP that even though we structure the XML, there is some we should define something which constitutes the request headers and then the actual message should be again a part of the common XML itself but we should have provision to check for both the headers and for the body so headers will contain the meta information and the body will contain the actual XML over which the work has to be done so in this way we can transfer both the meta information and the actual data so that's how the SOAP request has been structured and the idea is to keep this uh, structure uh, very simple and that's what SOAP has also done. I mean, it's very, very simple. It's same as a normal XST. Just that it, it enforces you to have, uh, like say, certain sections as a tool that you have to have a request section, sorry, a body section in uh, a request header section, etc. But apart from that, there is no other uh, restriction from like on you as a developer to do, to do something extra for soap okay so all messages all the messages shown in the above figure and I have I think I put it down yes so I think I have not put it here forgot to put it I'll show you in the next class so it's basically I mean same as whatever I'm describing here okay so all the messages shown here are sent using soap soap stands for simple object access protocol right and uh, if you see the bracket, uh, whatever is written, it means that uh, obviously it, sta it still stands for simple object access protocol. But what it means is that it has become such a common acronym that it is that it is almost standing as the word itself. I mean, most of the folks in the industry who have also worked on the web services, if you go and ask, they might not know the full form because it has been so much pervasive, right? So that's what's mean, uh, what is meant by the section which is written inside the brackets, right? And so essentially provides the envelope for sending the web services messages. So again, I mean, the envelope is that you have the start and the end tag. Inside that you have this request header and the body. So everything is enclosed within like the envelope. So that is what SOAP essentially does. 
so soap generally uses http but other means of connection may be used http is the familiar connection we all use for the internet in fact it is a pervasiveness of http connections that will help drive the adoption of web services so as i told earlier i mean web services have been famous mainly because they shows very simple protocol to use so because of that it led to its very very wider acceptance right so i mean let's say the web services are famous so one thing which i must to show you here is actual soap message and when i send today's uh, material also it send is a soap message also for looking into it okay now let's move ahead so the next thing which we am i recording it right yes so the next thing which we have is the rest right now what is rest so again the thing is that if you like are uh, have any of you guys heard about rest so i just wanted to check other folks who were there in testing or anything else yes shala has heard what about others anyone else has heard about rest okay so can one of you explain a bit like what do you understand for rest any one of you i mean you can unmute yourself and speak okay what else yes that's true what else arthi anything you want to add yes that is true okay yeah no problem so the thing is that rest is basically the thing is now if you see soap right it accepts not only http but other protocols as well but again let's give, uh, let's get back to reality how many times has it been used for other protocols i have never seen it getting used maybe rarely 10% maybe 5% of all the web services being developed and hosted today are using protocols as an http or https right but not anything else so if that is the case i mean what is the need to support it for other protocols right now come coming back to xml the wsgl now i as a developer like say i know that i always send since i have a closer ties with you and i consume your services i know that i have to send the first name last name and age now i do not need an xml to tell me that right so all that's a very good way in the sense that you can standardize things and it can be used across different uh, uh but different consumers you do not have to reinvent the wheel or tell them again but if you see from the developer's point i mean the you do not have to construct uh like xml around a wsgl you do not have to know uh, like what are the different elements the elements which you have you can just send it and maybe your service will just store the data so i mean that xml which is there that sometimes is necessary uh, in the case where the standardization is required but it makes the messages heavy because you have an extra envelope around the messages and the thing is that uh, you have to construct the messages around how the wsl specifies that your messages should be so if you remember what i was saying sometime earlier one of the major reasons soap actually and wsl in particular web services became famous was because it used uh, one of the common mechanisms to transport data one of the common protocols and that was http okay and because the industry is tilting towards service surrender architecture it held us a lot so it led to wider adoptions of uh, web services and people started communicating using these web services right now when the rest came what it promised is that you only use http 
you, uh, you do not need WSDL for communication. So just as you access a normal uh, URL over internet, like the way in which you open google.com or any other uh, site, in the same way you, you'll have a an URL and you can directly hit it. So, so if you see this particular example, it's just a URL with particular account value. So if you need to search for a particular account detail, you can just pass the account ID in the URL, right? And just hit it and get the XML response immediately. So if that is the case, you do not need the WSD also. You do not need to construct your uh, your uh, input data around an XML. So basically your development time has been reduced. Your services, the way in which you access it and the way in which you host it have become much more simpler. So simplicity is the key. Wherever you can make the development time small, make it faster for wider adoptance and people see value in it, it will get adopted very fast. And that is what has happened with REST. So although REST has not replaced SOAP as such, uh, it is used very, very widely in the industry nowadays. So if you go uh, to any new uh, startup type of companies or any companies which, which uh, thrive on innovation, etc., not like banks, because banks are pretty much like you know, say old age school uh, things and they're they, they are not going to change very often so they'll often prefer things which are more standardized and can be used uh, in a standard way but if you go towards uh, companies which have like uh, which have faster like say uh, want to develop service at a faster rate like say for example google amazon etc they use rest like anything Okay, and I see many companies. I mean, many uh, top end companies also they use uh, REST like anything because it's so simple to develop. I mean, it's much more simpler for adoption. And most of the cases, their services are like I want to store data in the DB. There are the five or ten fields. So for those stuff, and you know that it's being used internally, and there is no need for uh, you to define the XML because you know very well how it is. And in fact, uh, to cater to the need that since you do not define the WSL here, you do not have the actual field name, then where is the definition? So there have been tools around like Swagger, etc., which is used for documenting the REST services. So again, the, the bridge between uh, the uh, between the REST and SOAP, what were, were the pros for SOAP that the, it has been standardized, etc., it, I mean, we have found ways to standardize it. So REST is, uh, is soon becoming a de facto standard which is used across multiple uh, services and the thing is that many common frameworks such as Spring AVC, if you see the way in which it has been implemented, it supports REST kind of services also. So I mean all the web services, all the AVC patterns these days, wherever URL is there, the way in which it is being developed is that it can support REST uh, framework also. And REST is nothing but REST is a specification. So it says that you can access services over internet in the same way as you can access any other URL. You can pass the parameter in the request and you can post the parameters and you can expect response. And that is the basic idea around which the REST services have been developed. So REST is not part of our uh, curriculum, but I just wanted to give you a brief overview so that you uh, understand that what is the difference and uh, how uh, like rest differs from the soap and what is the fundamental uh, uh, thing i mean uh, uh, what is the fundamental driver behind rest what is the fundamental driver behind soap so is it clear till now guys did you understand about rest yes no okay what would other folks? Arthi, did you get it? Yeah, thanks, Shravan. Shraddha, did you get it? Arthi, did you understand? Okay. Now, let's go ahead and try to see the details of the web service right so now you now you should understand also the steps which are there but we'll still go one by one at has how this uh, call works right
so this is the um, i mean the way in which the call goes about so this is registry you have service provider and you have service consumer okay so service consume uh, so service provider registers services with wsu that is step number 1 so step number 2 uh, service consumer requests services from the registry okay now once it does that registry responds back with a wsu saying the saying that this is a wsu which you want to use for this particular service now using the wsu the consumer constructs xml sends it back to the service provider service provider once it gets the xml this uh, works on it and what is the response it sends back the response so these are the five steps which are involved in a proper web service communication but as told earlier this wsu is being like if it is like not for public usage these xmls are being shared between two parties one to one you do not need to go to a registry so in that case it's like service consumer contact service provider gets the wsu and that happens not programmatically it happens via process i mean you talk to them you get the wsu that's how it happens and using that you develop your application right and then there are only two steps involved in a very short form of this uh, communication so you get the xml service is requested based on the wsu the xml service is responded back on the basis of wsu so that is how the entire communication flows now uh, this registry is called as uddi okay so the uddi registry was intended to eventually serve as a means of discovering web services described using wsu the idea is that the uddi registry can be searched in various ways to obtain contact information and the web service is available for various organizations how much discovery was ever used is open to discussion and that's what i'm saying that that is idea but unless it is very very common so open for the entire public you do not need that discovery so it was hardly used okay so nevertheless even without the discovery portion the uddi registry is a way to keep up to date on the services your organization currently uses so it's i mean if you register it and i have not found people registering it also if you register it it's a way of bookkeeping just to maintain a record of how things are going okay so let me save this part what we have dealt till now 